Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, Jeff and I have made it all the way into Coventry, finally. Uh, the previous day we were up in, or down south in Chichester, I should say. And we are now up here in Coventry at the hotel, and I am surrounded by a murderer's row of some <laughs> of my favorite people uh, in the industry. And uh, let's go around the horn and introduce yourselves. Of course, it's me, Levi. Ivan LaCroix from Optimum Polymer Technologies. Hello, Ivan. Ed from Optico Europe. Jeff Hannon, the Rag Company. Patrick, Optico Europe, Rag Company Europe. Morten, Detail and Carcade Denmark. There we go. So we uh, we had a good night last night. We uh, walked out into the down into Coventry City. That was a lot of fun. I mean, we enjoyed it as a you know a group walk, a chat, and then we found a restaurant for dinner. Yes, which was very good. But uh, we got we needed a um, reservation, which we did not know we could. We went yeah. through about three restaurants. <laughs> yeah. to the one that we needed. Yeah, but it was it was just funny because we we uh, that was a very nice place that you were going to take us to. It yeah, it would have yes. been awesome. Maybe we can do some reservation. Oh no, you guys are going out on Sunday evening. We, you never For know. this evening we're settled because we yeah, will we be have at the, dinner, yeah. yeah, we'll have to trade dinner at uh, the Rico Arena. Yeah. Totally. So that will be nice as well. Uh, yeah. Meet lots of other people over there. Yeah, that, uh, I think that's what I'm most excited about is just getting to meet uh, other detailers and, and folks from uh, around Europe. Because you were saying, you guys, Patrick and Ed and, and uh, Morton, you guys were here last year. Mm. And we weren't. And so you're saying that it, there's a lot that come from Europe, a lot that come from uh, farther north. Most, yeah, yeah. Mo mo mostly it's like UK yeah. uh, that will visit Wackstock. Uh, I heard some of the guys talk about bringing Wackstock to mainland, which I think would be an awesome idea because yeah. it would be uh, easy approachable for the people in, in Europe itself, so less traveling. Uh, makes it a bit more difficult for the people from the UK, of course. But maybe you need to have two wax stocks, yeah, uh, right. or or one, one in the UK this year, one in Europe next year, something yeah, like through. Yeah, yeah, something like that. That would be a great idea because I think they can expand. Yeah, the uh, ICA, the car wash show, we found out does that, and they'll go uh, one year Las Vegas, one year uh, in Nashville, and then the, and they just alternate years. And uh, it helps keeps it fresh. It keeps, keeps it fresh. It. Keeps everybody kind of. Ah, I don't want to go back. Remember last year we had a bad. You know, it's a different part of the country. Mm -hmm. Different companies can can attend and things like that. So it keeps it different, which I think that could be a good good idea too. It'd be fun to see where that goes. But but we did have uh, we did finally get dinner at uh, a pub. Very large pub. Yes. Uh, we had to figure out our ordering system because we, <laughs> we sat there for a while. I waved at the waitress and uh, it was she, she, she smiled at me and kind of waved back and walked off. And I was like, all right. And so we went up and found out that we had to actually go to the bar, order our food. They don't take um, your order at the table. Yeah. yeah. They, they bring it to the table, <laughs> but they don't take your order. Yeah. They already knew, they knew you. Yeah, yes. yeah. She was like, hey. <laughs> Familiar. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so then we had dinner, had a good time, had a good conversation, then we came back here. We basically closed out this bar just talking. I mean, yes. we were all up till almost yeah. midnight, past midnight. Past midnight. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, just hanging out, chatting, and it's funny, because those are the conversations that we're like, ah. Oh, she should, should have recorded that. That. Yeah. that was a great conversation, you know. And then again, we go have breakfast and same thing. We have a great conversation. It's like, we should do the podcast. So here we all are. We've got to check in. we got to go to Rico Arena at 2. Uh, yeah, we have to go. Yeah, we need to be there at 3. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ready for to the build up. up. Yeah. Yeah, so we've, uh, we're, it's about 9.45 or so in the morning. So we're just kind of hanging out. And we've got the day to kind of hang out and do stuff and then go to the Rico Arena. We'll set up, then trade show dinner afterwards, mm -hmm. and then the show starts tomorrow at 9.30, doors open, so we'll Correct. get there at 9, yeah. and hopefully have a good uh, a good show. So this could be your first four-hour podcast. This could be the saying. first four-hour podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh we, are, we are four minutes and 52 seconds. And we just lost, ha lost yeah. half our minutes. <laughs> yeah, they all turned off. After trade dinner, we have a, we have a casino uh, e event. Uh, uh, let's put all the money on more. Like, yeah. like a yeah, last year? perfect last year. Yeah. Yeah. Did you win some money last year? Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> he paid for the cap, so that was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
He was on the winning streak. Yeah, that's good. So, uh, was you wondering? Uh, it's a uh, you know Jeff and I obviously are from Idaho. Yvonne is from Canada, and then uh, Ed and Patrick are from the Netherlands, and Morton's from Denmark. So, Morton, how is how is your business detailing over there compared to like what we're doing? Compared to USA? Yeah, compared to the USA. Of course, it's very small. Yeah. We have six millions in Denmark. So, of course, we have a lot of stuff to learn. But I think I think we are doing a great thing, especially when we got the whole OPT line. That was perfect. So, um, these, days we, these days we are coding a lot of cars. So, um, is it just you in your shop, or how many? I have, do you have one employees. Nice. And how many cars a month do you guys do usually, on average? Coding mice. But just cars through the shop. Forty, I guess. Nice. Yeah. It's a good amount for two guys, and and then most of those. How many of those percentage are codings? I think uh, fifty, I guess. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, good little good. business. Good ratio. Yeah. yeah. You do a great job over there. Yeah. 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 No, that makes it it makes it nice when you've got a good customer base like that that can do that. Because even when I was an OptiCode installer, I maybe only did 15, 20% of my customers. Mm. I do maybe one or two a month. But I was doing about 125 cars a month. And so one or two for coatings was we were like, wow, this is amazing. We got we can get some we can make some money here. So I to have a to have that level, that's awesome mm. to be in that area. So mm. it's a very good percentage. Yeah. Well, then you've been, you've got a new job, Ivan. Yes, I do. Well, on my way to a new job. <laughs> uh, still with Optum, we're just uh, transitioning. You've got uh, a new job title. Title, yeah, we'll put it that way. Uh, but uh, we're bringing new people on. Uh, we have Adam Uber that is joining our team and Dan McPhail uh, to not replace Dan Williams and myself, but to augment. Yeah. Uh, and then we're, Dan and I are moving up a, a notch, you could say, um, more into business development. Yeah. Uh, but we'll still be around. You won't lose us. Uh, <laughs> we'll still be in your way, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, the team is growing. Uh, Optimum is growing by leaps and bounds. So it's a, a nice a nice place to be. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, you've got actually, you're actually the longest on the tour with us, so to speak, in the sense that uh, Jeff and I are only here for the week. I mean, you guys are here for the event as well, but then Yvonne is going to meet up with you again, Patrick, in a little while. He will be flying yeah. to Denmark with Morton. Yeah, so he'll go with, you'll go with Morton. Yes, and then after with Morton, I'm going to Poland with Patrick, and then I'm off to Egypt to do uh, optimization training there. And then you come home. Yeah, probably if they, for a little yeah. bit, for like a day to wash his to wash his clothes. And then, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Sometime in August, I'll be home, uh, and then uh, back on the road again, uh, but in the U.S. Uh, to do some uh, R and D at the Pocono racetrack. Cool. Uh, just before the Indy race, there. That'll be fun. Yeah, and uh, then after that. September starts and it's a whirlwind up till December. Yeah, we're, we're hoping to have you at the facility in Boise there. Yeah, in September uh, at some is, point. That is one of my. <laughs> if we can get squeezed in there. Yeah, yeah. One of my along. one of my objectives. Uh, I have that. Um, uh, Romania is uh, on the table. Uh, SEMA, of course. Yeah, as always, uh, is a uh, un uh, unmissable item. And Patrick, you're coming to SEMA again this year? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And when you're staying home, or are you coming? I'm staying home, I'm staying home. Oh, well, I, I, uh, I have some some troubles with flying, and on the other side, someone has to, has to run the company. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Well, there was a funny thing happening yesterday, because Edwin is, fla is afraid of flying. So, and Ivan and Edwin never met before, and yesterday they met at an airport. So, <laughs> Ivan was kind of surprised to meet Edwin at an airport. Yeah. So, that was First awesome. time I met Edwin is at an airport. And then but <laughs> he wasn't inside the airport. Yeah. Yeah. And then you told him about how lovely your flight was, yeah, and exactly. how easy it went, and, yeah. and all the benefits that come from that. Exactly. And Edwin's like, and this is why I don't fly. Yeah. 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 All those wonderful reasons you speak of. Yeah. Well, finally, meeting each other, says Ivan, and Edwin. 
yeah. an airport, yeah, well, okay, that's uh, that's true, but this is as far as I go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going inside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna I was gonna ask uh, Ivan about you talk about optimum expanding. Yes. And you're you have a new facility and maybe you can explain with that growth, positive growth that Optimum is yeah, experiencing. We're uh, we're moving still staying in Memphis. Uh, the factory is growing roughly four times in size. Uh, Amazing. The training center is growing close to five times in size. Um, the training center will also become an OptiCode center, so we'll be actually doing installations at the same time uh, for OptiCode coding and OptiCode PPF. Uh, and we have a lot of new products on the way that we can't divulge here, uh, but uh, you might see them at SEMA. Yeah, hopefully we'll see them at SEMA. Uh, there'll be some products released before SEMA, uh, but uh, once they're available, we have, like I said, some things that are brand new categories that yeah. do not exist yet. Yeah, uh, which is that, exciting. That nobody else has. We have things that you know have been around for a while. Uh, as always, things are updating. Uh, we have new formulas of many items uh, on the way. So uh, a lot of uh, new changes a lot of new people as well. Uh, and the new building will bring uh, space for more things. Uh, you know, we're going from two filling lines to five filling lines. Uh, the, the warehouse space is much larger and expandable as well. Yeah. So we have room for growth in the coming years. That would be nice. Excellent. Yeah, because I know we have that same issue at the Red Company where yeah. we're, we get a space and we fill it, all of a sudden when we think we're not going to fill it, we're like, oh, we're good for at least a couple, this will be easy, and within three months, we're like, yeah. uh, Jeff's looking More space. and we need another building, we need, yeah. a, need to kick out another tenant, <laughs> we'll yeah. take over their space. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Your three-year plan becomes a three-month plan. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. 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 So it, I, it's a good thing, especially yeah. uh, just because of all the new stuff that's on the horizon, yeah. it, it's, it necessitates having that. Definitely, and there's uh, some of the things that will be pro only, uh, but a lot of things are at large for yeah. everyone. The uh, right company will be able to carry a lot exactly. of these. Exactly. Very yeah. exciting with these new products yeah, too. Yeah, definitely. That we uh, can't talk about. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, they, there are, they are coming soon. Coming soon to a right company near you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely. There are a lot of a uh, lot of new items, a lot of fun things, uh, things that we haven't had before, things that, as I said, haven't existed before. So, yeah. uh, straight from Dr. G's uh, wonderful mind. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, Patrick, you were saying you were in Romania. Yeah, correct. A few weeks ago. Yeah. And you were telling us just about how that is a very poor country, but Opticode is doing very well, or the Opticode installers are doing very well. Exactly. Yeah. The thing is, is that um, it's one of the poorest country, if it isn't the poorest country in Europe. Uh, average uh, wage, monthly wage, is like it's between five hundred and seven hundred euros. Yeah. Mm. So that's not much. No. Um, About a thousand dollars for those of you following in the U.S. Yeah. And I was there for the first time in two thousand seventeen to train a group of people to become OptiCode installers. And uh, after the three-day training, uh, because we had some translation issues at that time, and that takes a bit more time, so we got three days. And on the third day, I told them, okay, but this is what you have to charge for the Optical Pro installation. And they were like shocked. And they thought, everything is down the drain. I was here for three days and it's useless, you know, we yeah. can't charge these prices. Um, but I tried to convince them that if you charge these prices, your clientele will change and uh, that you that they need to have faith and um, I was meeting these guys because they were uh, at this training which I was uh, which I was giving yeah. given into Romania in 2017 for new installers these guys they were eager to come and meet up again and hang out and we had a great time and one of the guys uh, it's Marius he, he thanked me for the money that he made with OptiCode just by listening and yeah. now he is doing like crazy he has the Bentley Bottegas and the the Lamborghinis and if you tell me there is no money in in Romania then 
where are these cars coming from, you right. know? So someone's he, gotta clean them, someone's yeah. gotta coat them, someone's gotta protect them. Yes, and 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 uh, Christian, our uh, Romanian distributor, he does a great job. He has a he's surrounded by a group good group of people uh, which are being educated by the best detailers in Romania. So uh, they do like a, a, a base course, medium course and then an expert course and after that they can, they can become an OptiCode certified installer. So they are very high skilled. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. And now these guys are making money and they see the potential of making money. And they work together. They, because they're training together, they're learning together. They are so like family. family. If yeah. you if you go there and you have them on a table, everything everybody can get along. Yeah. Nobody is like uh, there are no egos involved. So yes. uh, everybody is has the same goal in mind to uh, because they chose up to code. These yeah. guys chose up to code, and more people will uh, because they want to be part of the team as well. So well, and I think that's the biggest point that a lot of guys need to figure out, and it's one thing that Ivan and I have always talked about is becoming friends, not, not having competition, having colleagues. Competing together, yeah. not competing against. Yeah. yeah, and like one of my favorite stories that you tell is about uh, Alex Loke and the guys down in uh, Nash or in uh, Louisiana. Louisiana. Yeah. They all got together and rented a car. Uh, no, it was, was that the, It was Connecticut guys, but they the, those guys got together and rented a car and then had a just polished learned how to polish, learned get to play with tools that maybe one of the others didn't have, learned different techniques, and actually just sat and worked together. Spent a talked. weekend together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, spent a weekend and just rented a car, worked on it, detailed it together. And I noticed when we were in uh, New Jersey at Phil's place, Detailer's Domain, a lot of detailers were like, "This is I love this being here for this open house because we can all come together and talk and work on projects or work on this, because we just had a rental car that it was Jeremy Harding's rental car okay. and they were they everything around it they were noticing they're like you can't find a car that has water spots you can't find a car that has scratches that has Mars that has you know paint transfer that has yeah. all these all these all the damage yeah that a rental car would get they were like you can't find a customer's car that would ever have all these different situations and scenarios that they could work from and Jeremy so, is very adept at choosing his rental cars. Yes, yes, <laughs> he's very good at that. Yeah. So it was, uh, but it was it was cool. But then, and a lot of them, and I told that story. I was like, well, you know, there's a this group of detailers that got together and, and did that. A couple OptiCode installers, and uh, one of the guys was like, that is the greatest idea. I've never even thought about renting a car. We've done it for events at the Rag Company. Yeah. You've gone down. Jeff's gone down and rented a, rented a car so we could play with it, and it. It's one thing that you can have when you can get a group of detailers together to work and have that common goal, be on the same team, and lift everybody up. We have a saying that we like to say a lot, a rising tide floats all boats. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. And if you lift everybody up, everybody benefits. Exactly. You know? And, you know, the detailing industry, um, of the people here have probably been in it the longest. You're, you're close behind me. Um, but it's changed dramatically, especially in the last 10 years. Yeah. And it, it is getting to be a community more than it ever has been. And, you know, I'd like to see that continue to grow and further that. Uh, the IDA has helped a lot in that. Yep. Uh, and the IDA is pushing towards professionalism. Uh, you know, not being the cutthroat, oh, I can be cheaper than the other guys. No, let's let's move this industry forward. Yeah. Uh, and, and I always felt that in, even in my state that you know, if I could get it to where other shops were either charging similar yeah. or close to what I was charging, it would just help us all out because you eliminate the people's price shopping. Yeah. And everybody's the same, you know, then it's your quality, it's your what what you offer to your customers, it's it's that kind of stuff rather than price. Yeah. It's who has the nicest smile. Yeah. 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 Who do they want to work with? And I mean realistically, the I know a lot of you guys might be listening to this and think like that's a dumb way to run a business, but the pot is so large. There's they have no idea. You, yeah. know, you think you're the only one in town and that no. you need to have all the cars. You can't handle all the cars. Yeah, no. I mean, so. yeah, Morton, can you detail all the cars 
in your area? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying. Yeah. <laughs> but he lives in a town of 30 people. So, <laughs> so he's actually doing more. He's got people coming in. <laughs> we can do them twice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The more guys you have in an area, the more awareness you, you create. And if, if you work together and not compete together, the awareness will, will grow and, and people will choose for Optico because it is different compared to others. And if you can uh, uh, explain that, preach that to a community, to, to, to an area, people will get on board. Yes. No, you know, uh, competition fosters awareness. And whether it be even in Optico Pro installers or other installers, just if you have more people offering coatings. Yeah. And you know, before coatings came along, we were doing wash and wax jobs at a hundred dollars, yeah, and you know, uh, people that aren't using the optimum system that was taking them like two hours to do. Right. Well, now we're doing a coding job at a thousand dollars. It's taking us four hours. Yeah. Do the math. Yeah. Well, that's what it is. Everybody's talking about coatings, and we are talking about coatings, and we know about coatings for many years now. Yes. So for us, it's like a common thing. Yeah. But for the public, it isn't. No. Right. If you are at, a, yep. I, I, for example, I take like a birthday party. If you give a birthday party or you visit one and people ask you what are you doing what are you selling and you tell them okay I sell or apply coding they're like what what are you doing yeah because and, and if you change the perspective and you tell them okay do you know what a wax is do you know what waxing a car is everybody knows what a car wax is if you hop to sevens you lose yeah. a bit of the crowd already right. because they don't know what they what you're talking about if you go to coding coding still is a virgin market yeah. And the pie is very large, you know, so it's it's a matter of time because I think coatings are the new waxes. Yeah. So I'm not saying don't wax your car, I'm not saying don't seal your car, but coating is different. So the customer can choose three options and they are all three different options. Oh, definitely. so yeah. And you know, it's like the microfiber towel game. Yeah, same thing. They're very well known in the detailing industry. But step outside of the detailing industry and the cosmetics industry, it's not as well known. Cosmetic is a different story, probably. Yeah, it is. It's it's a it's a growing segment of our it, business. It is growing. I've noticed yeah. like Bed Bath and Beyond carries what they call reusable makeup removers, and it's just a bag of microfibers. Yeah. Okay. And they have yeah. them in the bag, and it's at, at the at a Bed Bath and Beyond store, and it's. And I just think it's funny because I look at it, I'm like, these are just microfiber towels, but they're, you know, in pink and purple and maybe mm -hmm. turquoise and they're in a nice bag, but that's all it is. And it's, so it is funny to see these little leaps. We were in a Airbnb, Jeff and I, in Vegas, and the woman had her whole uh, closet and garage Everything. was all Norwex, yeah. which is a microfiber company that makes towels for home use, but charges... It's it's like a pyramid arrangement where yeah, you yeah, go to these yeah. house parties. Ah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and then yeah, they yeah. you know they give you food and drink yeah. and then yeah. oh here's, here's this towel for you know what, what should be a, a five or six dollar towel and it's a forty dollar towel and it's like yeah and you can clean your whole house with just water in this towel yeah and it's funny because they show the benefits they're like this is how great I've watched some of their YouTube videos and it's funny to see and for us we look at that and go well yeah that's what microfiber does it's just normal that's why yeah. we have microfiber towels. Yeah, it'd be so much better if they just put a few drops of oil on it yeah and it, it would work <laughs> way better but it, it's but it's funny to see that and go but there are so many people that don't but this is written for other folks who have never no you know I, I had a friend who actually uh, they knew what I was doing for a job they knew what I did they knew that I worked for the rag company and then his wife went and became a Norwex consultant to sell towels and I said just if you ever want to come over because I knew they didn't have a lot of money but I said if you ever want to come over to the rag company I can have you work through the towels I can teach you about microfiber I can give you a lesson so that it makes it easier for you to sell microfiber to your customers, customers. Yeah. and when you go to these parties and you do this and she was and she goes okay thanks yeah. And that was it. And as the, I haven't heard from her, haven't talked to her. No. But to me, I was like, I just wanted to help extend the education. Yeah. And say, come over here. We can show you. Give the knowledge. Give you, give you this knowledge that'll help you when you're going to sell. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, 
you talk to a detailer, you say, oh, this is a 70-30 GS with a 350 GSM, and it has a, a Terry weave. Yeah. They know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. You go outside the detailing realm, and you may as well be talking in Martian. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, microfiber has been around 30 plus years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it, you know, in the late nine, 1990s, it started to get some ground because people were seeing how efficient it was, but it was right. still kind of this snake oil, mysterious kind of a thing. But now when you look at the science, and actually the rag company was part of the original um, truly scientific uh, uh, study put on by the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency in the U.S., and it's they have not done a single study since that's no. it's out there it, it's like the baseline one and it was around 2002 2003 right around there that's over 15 years ago mm -hmm. yeah. and they haven't put out the new study but they proved they proved you know through petri dishes and everything else that you know it removes 99.9% .9 of the bacteria compared to cotton that's about 40 to 45% and uh, they went through all the different steps of in a healthcare environment. Well, yes. uh, healthcare environments can get pretty nasty, yeah. and and they they proved that out. And they're still but, using cotton. And they're still using yeah, cotton yeah. in in, yeah. in uh, a lot of the yeah, and and it's just amazing. And the the price points uh, they're very comparable. But when you the kind of the thing that pushes it over the edge, microfiber will outlast cotton by three times, and so. It becomes a no-brainer economically, but there's still so much education that still needs to take place. Businesses like the hotel that we're sitting in right now could benefit, and and for whatever reason, they don't always do that. Uh, they'll continue to go their old ways of using cotton. And well, unfortunately, and a lot of uh, having worked in a, uh, a commercial laundry facility, they boil everything. And and boiling will kill the towels. We know mm -hmm. what it does to microfiber. Yes. Uh, so anything over 60 degrees Celsius or 140 Fahrenheit is damaging to a microfiber. So the laundry facility has to know that. Uh, More education. Yeah, and that I think that is a stumbling block to get into the, the hotel and the, the uh, hospital industry compared to the detailing industry where the detailer is looking after his own investment. His yeah, own town. correct. Uh, because, you know, that is... You know, the biggest stumbling block. They use powdered detergents, big no-no. <laughs> they use, yep. you know, uh, scalding hot water. And the dryers... Uh, Toast. You know, yeah, it's a soggy desert. <laughs> uh, without the sand. Yeah. You know, they take the sand. Well, out. that's where you get the powdered detergent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, they're very hot environments. Uh, so very not bad for the towels. Uh, GK, which is a big... Uh, industrial towel supplier for garages and yeah. stuff. Uh, they came to uh, my wife's shop three or four years ago and saying we have microfibers. Now. Yep, they did that to me too. And their microfibers, the first bag that they bring you are fine. Then they wash them. Yep. And you might as well be taking sandpaper to the car. Yeah, yeah true. Because they wash them. Yep. And Sylvie told them, it's like, yep. you're going in your towels. And she explained to the guy, he says, Oh, we can't wash without hot water. Yes, you can. <laughs> there are ways to do it. Yeah, very, exactly. very effectively yeah. and very efficiently. Well, you will save on energy as well. These companies, yes. these washing companies, will save yes. on energy as well. You know, yeah. you don't need to heat it up as much as you normally do. No, and you know, once once those companies realize that microfiber will become more mainstream in those areas. Agreed. It's getting getting that message across. But microfiber is a you have a toolkit for your detailing business. Yes. Microfiber is a component of that oh, toolkit. Definitely. And it's an investment and yeah. you want tools that can do the job well, that'll last you a long time, they'll take care of you, you take care of them. Exactly. And uh, it, it's, it's people a lot of times think one size fits all, like uh, no. Kirkland brand and uh, you know, well golly, the towel, <clears throat> you have your yellow towel and you have a you have that one towel for everything. We just used it on the brake dust of you know on, mm -hmm. on the wheels and tires, and now you're using it on the paint. Well, that brake dust and everything else that you failed to clean out of it, yeah, it, you know, it becomes a. You want a color code. You want to have different products, different tools, um, and it's not always going to be our products. I, I'm not saying no. it always. Ha you might find a different. You know, uh, we always suggest Levi and I try them out. Find what works best for your method mm -hmm. because. 
I would say, now I'm not a detailer, you guys are, everybody has a different style and you're using different kinds of products and you will find that a particular towel will suit itself to your product and detailing style. Exactly. And so uh, you want to make sure that you've got uh, in your toolkit a good variety of towels, good quality, and, and they will last a long time. They will pay dividends. They, it, it's worth to, to buy the quality. Yeah. Uh, I always equate it to how many polishing pads do you have? Yeah. Do you have just one style of polishing pad to do all yeah, your but polishing? You're correct because everybody is investing in machines, the shops, the lightning, everything needs to be perfect. But if you have like a good polishing machine with a good polishing pad and you do the job and you have like a shitty microfiber or other towel, you ruin yeah, you ruin everything you yes. worked on, you know? So yeah. you need to have good microfiber. It should be like a, a detailed asset. Yeah, and before microfiber, we were, we tried all sorts of things. Cotton, cotton diapers. Diapers, oh, that was the ultimate. Baby diapers. Yeah, oh, yeah. that was like, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I just tell the story. When I was uh, 17, I was very excited about buying my own bag of diapers, of diapers <laughs> yeah. to use on my on my 76 Oldsmobile. Yeah, exactly. And uh, but that way, you don't have that problem anymore. Yeah, I don't have that problem anymore. So it was, uh, you know, I remember though because I had to use my dad's, and he had bought. He always just had old ones, and I didn't know how old they were. I didn't know if they were from five years ago. I don't know if they were from 20 years ago. I don't know if maybe they were old, my old thing <laughs> when I was a kid. Um, didn't recognize but, the stains. Yeah, yeah, I didn't recognize the stains, thankfully. But it was. But he had t-shirts, old cut-up t-shirts. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, he yeah, yeah. And he was an old detailer, and he'd wax cars. And uh, you know, my mom used to put me on a in a backpack yeah. and in the, the like kid carrier, and she she'd be down there cleaning wheels and scrubbing yeah. wheels and taking off wax with him and yeah. and all that. And so, but they would use t-shirts. They'd use. Yeah, we went through the cheesecloth phase. Cheesecloth, yep. Yeah. That was another one. Yeah, yeah. But thankfully, we have microfibers now. Well, newspapers on glass. I just had a customer a couple yeah. days ago. They said, oh, I'm still using newspaper. <clears throat> and well, it's like, newspaper's and, not the same. No, a newspaper used to work actually very well when it was solvent based inks. But now they're, they're water based inks. Mm -hmm. It does not work the same as it did 20 years ago. Yeah. Now, his technique has remained the same, and he probably has a very good technique, and that's why it still works. <laughs> yeah. That would make sense. Yeah. But there are towels now, microfiber towels for glass, lint-free, streak-free. Right. There's, there's methods using O&R as a, as a glass uh, cleaner. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you can get 256 gallons of glass cleaner out of one single gallon of O&R. Exactly. True. <laughs> very, uh, very efficient, and, yeah. they, and it works wonderfully for that. Well, like Edwin even brought over, a, he brought a Dry Me a River waffle weave to clean his glasses. Yeah, yeah. Because, Excellent. Well, be any, any good, he had a good point that uh, if you, if you, you know, the smaller lens cloths, if you use them a lot, and for those of us that wear glasses, we clean our glasses a lot. He was noticing that he was getting oils on the towels. And when you're traveling, when, you, when, you, when you're away for, for, for several days, then yeah. you need oil at least. You can't few, wash them. Yeah. You wash them or, or more of the, of the smaller ones. So yeah. I decided to, to take with, uh, with me a bigger one. Yeah. Yes. So the big one is the traveling size. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's maybe open for discussion. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's not the 26 by 59, so we're yeah. all okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> Pulls out a bath towel. It's also going yeah. to the beach with me. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just a uh, 16, uh, yeah, 16, 20, 20, 16 by 24. Yeah. 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 Which is a good size because, you, like you said, you've got a clean area. Always over, time, over yeah. the time that you're using it, which is I, that was I love that idea. So, uh, yeah, Much it's better than a t-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> and I we, you know, I'm I still will use a t-shirt. <laughs> yes. And when I'm in a pinch, and we have given. Dane's not gonna like me telling this story, but Dane, we were sitting he's in there. He's not here, so he doesn't get to defend himself. <laughs> but we were sitting in the office. We were in Dane and Anthony's office one day. And I think you asked for the iPad. You, you and I went into the office. You said, hey, where's the new iPad? And the boys grabbed it and handed it to, to you, and it was filthy. It was very, just greasy yep. screen covered, and you were like, geez, guys, it's brand new. It just got out of the pad. Like, we've only had it a day. And hands it, and Dane's like, oh, let me, uh, I'll clean that. Mind you, we were in a room that had stacks of towels that the boys had been using to take pictures of. And they had just made like a, you can go on our Instagram profile ways back and you can see they built like a mountain and then yeah. they put some cars on it and made it look like they were drifting on a mountain, but it was all microfiber tops. 
so was the still, Everest, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was a bunch yeah. of, So they yeah. still had stacks of those towels in their office. So Dane could have easily just grabbed one of those towels, cleaned the screen off, and handed it back. He searched and searched and grabbed a Kleenex tissue Whoa. to wipe the towel and all, or wipe the screen. And all of us just started la like we <laughs> lost it. That he was looking around and there's literally a, at least a hundred <laughs> microfibers in front of him. And he pulls out a Kleenex tissue <laughs> to clean it. But it, it, it's still in that you know he didn't. And his theory was, I don't want it dirty. One these, of these towels, towels yeah, they gotta go. They might need to go back out for sale. So I didn't want to worry about that. Yeah. But we were laughing that, uh, you know, right, Dane. Great. They yeah. just made the biggest mistake in the <laughs> much inside better the red option. company. Yeah. There are far better, literally any type of towel. But it's just fun to like we, you know, there's times where even I don't reach for that to clean my glasses just because it's habit. Yeah. Yes, you that's know? what it is, and you get familiar because you guys see a lot of microfiber. So that you don't even notice that it's in yeah. the office, you know. Yeah, so, no, exactly. Uh, especially in my office. Yeah, Jeff's you, office. You've is seen also my office before. It's and there's Je mountains. Yeah, <laughs> and Jeff's office is the R and D center of <laughs> towels. I mean, there's towels that will never exist anywhere else other than Jeff's office. Yep. Uh, the, the factory will send us samples of new materials, things they're experimenting with. Yeah. We, we're trying to design new products. That how we can leverage uh, these these kinds yeah. of materials and and uh, there's there's just odds and ends yeah different mountains of odds yeah, and ends weird colors uh, yeah yeah well like the first bluffle that yeah. we got was the green lime green yeah and uh, it had an overlock stitch edge and it was lime green and it, it's fun to see it because you go oh and now it's the bluffle everybody knows it and uses it loves it yeah uh, so it's fun to see the different or you see the progression of thoughts. Uh, we have eagles with suede edges. We have eagles with microfiber edges. We have eagles with... Edges. Going uh, back, even edges. overlock stitch. Overlock uh, stitch edge. Yeah. Well, you guys use a lot of feedback that you get from your customers, right? Yeah. Correct, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, we can kind of tell, you know, if there's, if there's a common theme that we hear over and over, it's like, okay, there's something in the marketplace that's, that's maybe shifting, uh, perception. Maybe a competitor released a new product. Uh, maybe a, a you know something we hadn't considered. Or if there's a need. If if there's a you know nobody makes this. Yeah. Like yeah. We, have, we have a towel that we need for a new product that we came to you. And yes. Said we need a specific towel that doesn't exist. And we'll make it. Guess who? Yes. You know, it's on its way. And we, we with these new materials as well. We uh, <laughs> before Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> It'll get there. You're <laughs> not. Um, but there are there are so many new things, changes in the industry, not just with microfiber towels, with Optima, with the yeah. You know, oh, and, and, and chemical detailing, chemical yeah. detailing. detailing in general. It's it's so much fun to see the growth of the industry. Uh, you know, you have, come to a show like Wax Talk. This is the seventh year. Uh, we go to SEMA. We go to MTE. We go to uh, detail fest, whatever show we're going to, Auto Mechanica, you go to these shows and every year everybody's booth gets nicer, everybody's booth gets bigger, there's more products, there's new innovations, there's new tools, uh, you know, it's, it's invigorating, it's fun, uh, you know, the industry is expanding, it's growing, and the new detailers coming in are, are bringing in a lot of enthusiasm, they're bringing in yeah, much, a lot of energy, a mm -hmm. lot of energy, and uh, thankfully for me, uh, they're bringing in business sense as well. Yeah. You know, they're not just look. A lot of them are not just looking at this as a stopgap measure until I do something else. They're looking at this as a career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And detailing is a career if you want it to be, and it can be a very lucrative career. It can be an extremely rewarding career. Uh, you know, and a lot of the things that are fun about detailing is you start the project in the morning. And by five o'clock, you have a customer that's in front of you that is just wow. Over the moon, yeah. Yeah. And you get that instant gratification every day. Uh, you know, you get that customer satisfaction every day, day in, day out. Whereas, you know, uh, one of the people in Sylvie's shop, he's owned body shops, he's worked in body shops all his life. And now he's, he does her smart repair but he also helps with the detailing uh, when there's no spark repair to be done. He loves it because 
his projects take three or four hours, whereas they used to take three or four days. Mm -hmm. So now he's seeing results every time. And when he was doing accident repair, it's the customers coming to you because they have to come to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a joyful experience it's to go to a body shop. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a choice. Yeah. Whereas it's a choice to have your chart your car detailed. Yeah. It's, a, it's a desire, it's a want. Well there's also the prosumer, you know, the customers that yeah. get their, their cars done. Yeah. Now there's products that are so easy to use oh, exactly. and so much more effective. Correct. They can they can buy them and they can take them home, do them at their leisure, and get results yes. that they never would have obtained three, four, five years ago, yeah. 10, 20. I mean, it's just so dramatically uh, improved. And, oh, and yeah, there's a, a lot of great products out there, whether it be Optum, whether it be other companies, that make it easy for the home detailer. You know, the prime example I always give is gloss coat. Yeah. There are a lot of quote unquote professional coatings out there that aren't even close to gloss coat. But gloss coat is a consumer available coating. It's easy to apply. If you can apply a wax, you can apply gloss coat. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, a lot of times we get on the, the forums and the, the Facebook groups that, oh, I'm about to do gloss coat for the first time. I'm nervous and it's, my yeah, reply is yeah. always just relax and enjoy yeah. it. It's not difficult. Well, last weekend you called me on a Saturday when you were in the store and you said, yep. we had two coatings with gloss coat and then the other one that we sell inspiration yeah and jeff at, jeff called and said hey these people were just starting out they want to coat the car what do you think would be best because the inspiration is 30 cc's and yeah they wanted to buy maybe 10 and they were like well, is that even enough can we and i said if it's their first time ever doing a coating gloss coat all the way because it will be far easier for them to install they won't have to stress so much. I said, you've got enough in that vial to do a couple cars. And they said, well, we've got a truck. I said, perfect, then you have plenty in that vial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can do that truck and it'll be just fine. It's very simple, very easy. Yeah. And you know, I'm not saying that Inspiration is a bad coating. It's just, it's a little more difficult to install. Yeah. And you need to have some coatings under your belt yeah. to use it. Need to have experience. Yeah, yes. And but uh, but no experience, gloss coat is very simple, very easy to use. And, that, and it's a really good coating. Exactly. Like I said, if you can apply a wax, gloss coat is easier. Yeah. Well, and you taught me to, I started doing that on my customers' cars. I just apply gloss coat instead of a product. Yeah. Like wax or a sealant. It was that easy. Yeah. Yeah. It was that easy. And I knew they were coming back three or four times a year. So it made my job much easier to just give them that investment myself and say, you know, I put gloss coat on your car. I'm not charging you for it. See how you like it. See how it reacts. I'll see you in three months to get it cleaned again. And then they'd get it and they're, they'd come back and they're like, yeah, I don't even think I need to have my car detailed. It, it stays so nice. And yeah. it's like, well, yeah, that's kind of the point because it teaches them to learn about coatings, but it also saves me and my guys a whole lot of time when we're, when we're just doing a maintenance or a cleanup on it. Yeah. Because they, you know, to them, it's, it looks nice. Yeah, and the, coat, the customer that you get hooked with a gloss coat, the next vehicle they're coming back for pro coding. Yeah, yep, and yeah, they do. Every and, time. Yeah. And everyone that I did, did that. Yeah. They'd call and go, hey, I wanted you to do the nicer stuff. Yeah. Just bought a new car and you had put gloss coat on my car and I really liked it, but I want to do that. The Big pro, one. yeah. yeah. Or pro plus. Yeah, exactly. And that was that was a really nice selling feature. Mm-hmm. You know, for some people it was a long game, you know. Oh yeah. You know, it could be a year or two, but it was always, it was effective. And yeah. It always worked. So. But they need to be convinced that a coating is a different Yeah, they option. need to see that difference. Exactly, yeah. And being able to see it every day and use it every day, they'd go, wow. I'd have some that, you know, the wife would take it through the car wash anyways. The husband, I'd do it for the husband. Yeah. But they'd keep the interior clean. But even then, the outside stayed nicer, so we did not have to polish. You know, mm-hmm. in previous years had come through, and I'm like, we're going to take the clear coat off. We can't keep poly- you're damaging the car too much from going through the car wash three, four times a week. Mm-hmm. And being able to put gloss coat on even then slowed that yeah. process, that deterioration down. Yeah. So instead of a two step when they came back, it was just a one step. Oh, Patrick did yeah. a, an amazing test on his car. Yeah. I remember I called you one day and you're like, I'm going through the car wash. Yeah, you were I'll like, call what? You right back. Yeah. I'm like, he was what? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then he started sending on pictures. Purpose? Yeah. Uh, yeah, on purpose. Yeah, on purpose. Yeah, what we did last year because we we use like these bonnet hoods for training purposes. So, and uh, if we have a training and we have like a couple of weeks in between, we send out the hood mm-hmm. to reapply the coating. 
but in this case we applied the new Pro Plus and um, we wet sand normally. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Everything stayed hydrophobic. We wet sand, wet sanded with the machine, the Rube Scorpio, mm -hmm. and um, it wasn't doing anything. Just a bit of marring and stayed hydrophobic and I was like, what is this? You know, so we didn't expect that. The previous coating was... A little softer. Yeah, it was softer and easier to remove. So that gave me the idea to test it out. So we polished the front end of the car, uh, left the, the bumper untreated, the fenders were treated with Pro, and the hood was treated with Pro Plus. And I went through the uh, automatic car wash, the tunnel wash, uh, every other week. So that's like how many we, we still got the tickets. Yeah, I but it's uh, over three three bottles of a year. It's almost a year. Yeah, it was August that we polished the car. It's almost yeah. August again. But I was fed up with the tunnel washes, so uh, I was like, okay, let's shoot a video uh, and uh, show the people why a coating can help you out. We are not saying drive through yeah. the tunnel wash with your coating. We're no, just saying exactly. it will do something for you. It, it is better scratch resistant. It's not scratch resistant. Right. It's not scratch proof. It's not scratch proof, you know, but, uh, and otherwise we would be talking here on a podcast. We would be probably selling stuff to the military yeah. if we could achieve yeah, that, yeah, you know. So, yeah. yeah, so, but in this case, it was awesome to see the difference in, in, in scratches. So, and that's why we shot the video to show people, okay, this is what the coding does a year off. Uh, driving through these tunnel washes. Yeah. So that's that, that was really awesome. And still, if you see the difference, you can see it in the video, but if you see it in real life, well, we have the car with us, so we can take We're a look go later. We're gonna look at it. Yeah, so it's like crazy, yeah. it's crazy, so. Yeah, and that's, and, and that's, I think that was my favorite thing to hear about. And you took your Jeep through Graham's car wash. Yeah. And you, really, you said it was great, and Graham and his dad have designed this because Graham is an OptiCode installer. Yeah, uh, in Naples, Florida, they have a, there's a new style of car wash, and uh, some call it Neotech, some call it Neoprene, but it's a basically wetsuit material that they use for the brushes, and it's very slow moving. The yeah. brushes, you can count the revolutions, they're moving yeah. so slowly. Uh, but when the brush comes back around your vehicle, it's been rinsed like four times. Yeah, uh, it's completely clean, so it's not it's not hitting the vehicle, and it's not scraping on the vehicle. It's gently lifting the dirt off. So with the chemical technology they're using, with the brush technology they're using, it actually is a safe car wash, and safe car washes do exist. Uh, there's one car wash manufacturer, and I don't know the name unfortunately, but I know that they bought two brand new black Ferraris, and they took one and they parked it in a warehouse and they took another one and they're driving it through a car wash every day. One of their car washes. And at the next car wash show, they're gonna park the two side by side. Yeah. It'd be cool to see. Yeah, to see how much damage their car wash doesn't impart on the vehicle. Yeah. And apparently the one that's gone through the car wash actually looks better than the new one. Because <laughs> uh, it lightly polishes, yeah, yeah. but okay, without yeah, scratching. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so there is money that you can make in the car wash industry if you have like two Ferraris for testing. That's yeah, <laughs> well, apparently, you know, and that's changing, fortunately. But it used to be that you know, if you want to wash a Ferrari, you become a detailer, if you want to own a Ferrari, own a car wash, yeah, yeah. Uh, but now that's changing. You know, we see a lot of detailers mm -hmm. that are maybe not at Ferrari level, well, some of them not have Ferraris. But uh, you know, we see detailers becoming more and more successful yeah. as they're becoming business owners, as yeah, opposed to mm -hmm. as opposed to craftspeople, and as they're you know concentrating more on coatings and more on PPF and high level services. Yeah. And you know, one service that I've always cherished is the wash clay and wax. Uh, it's easy to make two hundred dollars an hour doing wash clay and wax. Yeah. And customers love that service. It's yeah. just a, you know, it's a bread and butter service. Even though if you're doing only coatings, you still need to maintain your coating customer cars. And that mm -hmm. is the easiest way of maintaining those vehicles. And it's profitable. Yeah. Yeah, and for me it was. That was a very easy upsell or just add-on yeah. for customers. They 90% wanted interiors. Yeah. I just clean the inside and we'd wash it anyway. And then I threw it in for like another 
seventy five bucks or whatever I yeah. do clay and wax and they'd go, Oh yeah, let me get a coat of wax on there. Yeah, so take my guys twenty minutes. Yeah, so you're doing the free wash that would take you ten minutes. Yeah. Or the wash clay and wax at twenty minutes for seventy five dollars. Yeah. So the math isn't hard to figure yeah. out. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden our detail became a two hundred dollar detail. Yeah. That was only in the shop for less than an hour and a half or two hours. Yes. Yeah. That was out the door. Exactly. So it was really good. Well, thank you gentlemen for hanging out here and uh Thanks that the hotel staff never even came in after we told them to leave. So that's yeah. good. <laughs> in the beginning, the guy had a broom and he was or mop and he was making it. It was very squeaky. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, uh, so anyway, I uh, appreciate you guys listening to this. Uh, follow us on uh, Facebook and YouTube and uh, Instagram to see what we've been doing through this whole adventure. Uh, if you haven't been keeping up, and uh, stay tuned uh, for more podcasts right here on the Rag Company podcast channel. Talk to you guys later. Bye.